Hello, everyone. Welcome to the lesson for H3-10. Today, we're going to look at multiplying and dividing rational expressions. And what do we mean by rational expressions? Well, that key root word here is ratio, right? So ratio meaning a comparison of two numbers by division or a fraction. Okay, so we're going to be looking at simplifying fractions that contain algebraic expressions. Let's get started. We're going to have a little warm up here, and this is something we've already done in the past. We're just going to simplify a few of these uh, fractions. The first one says A is 2 times 3 times 8 over 6 times 5 times 4. Now, if you wanted to, you could take those and multiply those together. You would have 48 over 120, and then you could take it and reduce it. Okay, but you know, that may not be the fastest way to take it and multiply it all together because then you have to take it and break it back apart. This one's already broken into factors. It's factored for us. So let's just reduce it. Let's look for factors that would appear in both the top and the bottom. When you look here, you see that we have no exact number that shows up in the top and the bottom, but I know that 2 goes into 2 once and it goes into 6 three times. So that would become a 1 and our 6 would become a 3. But then we also know that, you know, there's a 3 in the top. So 3 goes into 3 once and goes into this 3 one time. And then 4 goes into 4 once and goes into 8 twice. So what we're really looking at is saying 1 times 1 times 2 over 1 times 5 times 1. When we do that, 1 times 1 times 2 is just 2. And then 1 times 5 times 1 is just 5. And our answer is 2 fifths. Now the second one, we've done some of these as well. We just need to focus on our compatible parts, right? Our three and seven aren't going to change. There's no compatible numbers or factors between the two, but I've got an x squared and an x, right? So when I have x squared over x, that's going to reduce down to just an x. When I have a y over a y to the fifth, Right, we know that this 1 would cancel out one of these, and we'd be left with a 1 over y to the 4th. And then we have a z to the 4th over z. So that would cancel out one of those fourths, and we'd have a z to the 3rd over 1. So when we bring back in that 3 sevenths, and we look to multiply everything together, we're going to have a 3x z to the 3rd. over 7y to the fourth. And that is our answer. Last one's very similar. We have 8 over 4, which we know is 2. x to the negative first over an x. Remember, this negative first power is going to move down here. And then we're going to have a 1 plus a 1 that gives us a 2. Our negative 2 right here is going to move to the top. When it moves to the top, we're going to take that 1 that's up there, we're going to add 2 to get y to the third. And then it appears that we have just a single z on the numerator and the denominator, so we'll just cancel those out. Our answer then looks like it's going to end up being 2 times y to the third over 4x squared. And that's it. Let's move on. So today it says to multiply and divide rational expressions or fractions with variables, there's a couple steps. First, factor everything. Think about your greatest common factors, differences of squares. Are they perfect square trinomials, just regular trinomials? All those things come into play. After we find all our factors, we're going to look to see if there are any that are the same on the top and the bottom. Those will just cancel out by dividing to give us a value of 1. Now, the other important part of this is when we're talking about excluded values, we need to look at any input that would make the denominator equal 0. So after we solve something or we simplify it down, if there's a, you know, a chance that our denominator could be 0, we need to make sure that we don't have any of those excluded values in our answer. So any fraction is undefined, remember, when 0 is the denominator. 
So let's go ahead here and jump on into this. It says, what numbers would make the denominator zero? To find these, set the denominator equal to zero and solve it. So for instance, we have five over x minus two. I'm gonna take my denominator, x minus two, set it equal to zero, and I get x equals two. Well, that's not gonna work for us, so our excluded value is x equals two. Okay, because x can't equal two. Why can't x equal two? Well, if I take two and I plug it in, two minus two is gonna give me zero. I cannot have five over zero. The second one, we have x times the quantity of x minus one. Let's set that equal to zero. And as we do that, we use our zero product property, so we know that x cannot equal zero. And then when we solve the next one, x cannot equal one. So if I put either of those values in, right, it would make our denominator zero. We don't want that. The third one, we've even got three factors. We'll just set it equal to zero x times the quantity of x plus 5 times the quantity of x minus 1. Set each of those equal to 0, so x cannot equal 0. x cannot equal negative 5, and x cannot equal positive 1. And those are our three excluded values there. If you have questions, please make sure you're marking them down, and then you can ask in class. We've got two more quick ones to do on this page. So what happens when you have a trinomial like this? We'll just take that, we'll set it equal to zero, and solve it, just like the other ones. This one appears to factor. We've got an x and an x, and then we'll say plus two and plus three. We'll set those equal to zero, and we'll see that x cannot equal negative two, and x cannot equal negative three. Last one for this section, we have 12a over b squared c. Well, b squared c is just a, you know, multipl multiplication statement. We could take it here and set it equal to zero and then factor it apart. We have b squared could equal zero or c could equal zero, which means b cannot equal zero and c cannot equal zero. Those are the excluded values. Okay, so let's move forward. The next part says, simplify the algebraic expression. Letter A, we have 5A squared plus 4A minus 1. And then we're dividing by 5A squared minus 10A minus 15. Let's just make this as easy as possible. So what we want to do, remember the steps that were listed was, were to factor everything. And then the second step was to simplify, you know, basically looking for the factors that appear in the numerator and the denominator. All right, I'm not teaching you how to factor today. Hopefully you already know how. If you don't know how, you need to go back and find a way to learn. This is excellent practice on it. So our first trinomial at the top looks like it's going to end up factoring into a 5a and an a, a 1 and a 1, and then we're going to need a positive number here and a negative there. That's being divided by that trinomial. So what I see here with this trinomial though, it's got a perfect square, I'm sorry, perfect square, a greatest common factor of five. So if I factor out that five, I've got a squared minus two a minus three. And then I can see that that's gonna factor again. So I'm gonna copy down here, we've got five, and then that a squared minus 2a minus 3 should factor into a minus 3 and a plus 1. And now we're going to just cancel out the factors that don't uh, belong, the ones that repeat here. So a plus 1 and a plus 1 can cancel out. And we're left with 5a minus 1 over 5 times the quantity of a minus 3. Now if you had distributed that back through, you could have said 5a minus 1 over 5a minus 15 as well. Either of those is correct. All right, letter B, you see we have z to the fourth minus 5z to the third plus 6z squared. 
We're multiplying it times 9z minus z to the third, and we're raising that to the negative first power. So before we get too far into it, let's just think about that part for a second. We know that makes this 1 over 9z minus z to the third. All right, so since we're multiplying it times all of this, it looks like that is going to be our main denominator. Now, can we factor these? Absolutely. With this first one, we know that there's a greatest common factor, z squared. And then when we factor it out, we're going to have a z squared minus 5z plus 6. And then on the bottom, okay, we've got a z as a common factor. And then what's left over is going to be a 9 minus z squared. Okay, so we factored out the greatest common factor on each of those, but it looks like they both factor again. So we have a z squared times a z minus 3 times a z minus 2 over our original greatest common factor. And then this is a difference of squares, so it should be a 3 plus z and a 3 minus z. And now we need to look to simplify. Now I can see already out here that z will go into both of these, leaving us with just a single z on the top. Now z minus 3 on the top and a 3 minus z on the bottom, those are opposites. Remember, if I have two numbers that are opposites, like 6 and negative 6, when I divide them, I get negative 1. All right, so with this, you could do this a couple ways. But when I look at z minus 3 and 3 minus z, you can either factor a negative 1 out of one of them so they look the same and then cancel them out. Or you could just cancel them and just make sure you make one of them a negative 1. So I'm going to make this bottom one a negative 1. This would be like a positive 1. And so, oops, I canceled out the wrong thing there. Um, well, actually, they both are, so. What we have left now looks like z times 1 times z minus 2. I'm going to just go ahead and put it as z times z minus 2 over. We have just a negative quantity of z plus 3. Now, I don't like to leave a negative quantity on the bottom, so I'm going to just put it in the front of my fraction bar. And then we've got z times a quantity of z minus 2 over z plus 3. All right, so lots of examples in here, so hopefully plenty for you to try. The second example just says simplify. You have 8x squared minus 6x over 4x squared. And there's a couple ways you could do that. You could break it into you know, more than one fraction. But let's just follow the procedure that we were talking about. Let's factor our numerator. It looks like our greatest common factor is going to be 2x. So then we're going to have a 4x minus 3 left over. And right now that's over a 4x squared. So it looks like we have some common factors, right? When we look out here, right, this, these are monomials. We can cancel out any monomial with other monomials. But we can't cancel out this 4x with it because it's got the minus 3 also. So I'm going to say 2 goes into 2 once and goes into 4 twice. And then this x would cancel out, and then one of these ones would, so we'd have just a 2x. And it appears then our answer is going to end up being 4x minus 3 over 2x. Let's look at b now. Same thing. We have trinomial on the top, binomial on the bottom. Go ahead. If you want to pause it, try to do it, and then check it. That would be awesome. First thing I'm going to do here, x to the third plus 6x squared plus 9x. Let's just factor out the greatest common factor of x. So we have x squared plus 6x plus 9. On the bottom, I have a common factor of x as well. Then I have x squared minus 9 left over. We need to factor each of those a little bit more. So this is going to become x times x plus 3 times x plus 3 on the top. On the bottom, we're going to have an x times a quantity of x plus 3 times a quantity of x minus 3. And now the simplifying part. x's cancel, x plus 3's cancel, and then we're just left with x plus 3 over x minus 3. 
All right, let's keep going here. Next one also says simplify, so just keep going at it. We have x squared plus 2x minus 8 over 2 minus x times 4 plus x. Looks like the top is going to factor into an x plus 4 and an x minus 2. On the bottom, you have a 2 minus x and a 4 plus x. Well, I can see that x plus 4 and 4 plus x are the same thing. All right, that would be a 1 and this would be a 1. Now with this 2 minus x, you could factor out a negative 1 and then make it x minus 2. That would allow you then to cancel this with this. And it appears that we've got 1 times 1 over negative 1 times 1. So this whole thing would simplify to negative 1. Letter B. We have z to the 4th minus 1 over z to the 4th minus z squared. Okay, this one looks simple, but there's a few steps to it. Let's take it and factor our z to the 4th minus 1. Now this is a difference of squares, so this would be the same thing as saying z squared plus 1 times the quantity of z squared minus 1. Okay, this one is still a difference of squares, so we could break that down even more. We're going to say this is z squared plus 1 times a z plus 1 times a z minus 1. In the denominator, when we look at these two terms, you see that there is a greatest common factor of z squared. And then that's going to give us a z squared minus 1 left over. And we just factored that same part of it, you know, a second ago. So let's just go ahead and write those in underneath. We'd have a z squared times a z plus 1 times a z minus 1. Right, so we just factored that to get to there. And is there anything that we can look to cancel out? I think you'll see here that there's a z plus 1 and a z plus 1, a z minus 1 and a z minus 1. And then we have z squared plus 1 over z squared. And remember, you can't cancel those z squareds out, so this is as far as you can go. All right, I know there's so many examples in this one. I wonder why I put so many of them in here. So if you're feeling good, you can pause it, try the rest, and then go back and watch it if you need to. Um, you know, I can't tell you how you're feeling about it. These ones are review, or at least the first one is. It says multiply. So we're multiplying two fractions. We know that really this is the same thing as just multiplying it as one big fraction, right? We have b to the third times 2 times x squared times y over x times y times 4 times a times b. Now let's just cancel out things that repeat in the numerator and the denominator. First of all, y's cancel. We'll cancel out an x, so I have just an x up here. This 2 will become a 1, this 4 can become a 2. Then this b can cancel with one of these, leaving this as a b squared. And then I don't see anything for a down there, so we're going to end up with x times b squared over 2a. I believe that's all that's left there. Okay, so take, just take your time with those ones. You can do more steps than I did. I'm just trying to get through this without making it an hour long. So letter B, we've got a to the third minus 6a squared over a squared plus 2a minus 3, and then we're multiplying it by this other fraction. So now you're starting to see this multiplying uh, coming a little bit more into play. So let's factor everything first. The first one here, let's write up here. We know that that's going to have a greatest common factor of a squared, and then we're going to have an a minus 6 left over. In the denominator, it looks like we're going to have an a plus 3 and an a minus 1. And our other fraction, we're going to have a perfect square trinomial there, so it would be like a minus 1 times a minus 1. And then we have just an a to the third in the denominator. So this a squared is going to cancel out with two of those, leaving us with just an a. This a minus 1 we cancel out with this a minus 1. So it appears right now that we've got a minus 6 times the quantity of a minus 1 
over a times the quantity of a plus 3. So nothing else would cancel there, so that would be my answer. Now they can both be simplified a little bit more in terms of multiplying them out, but you don't need to do that right now. If you can get to this point, we're good to go. Example 5, it says divide. Okay, so with this one we were just multiplying. We're just multiplying straight across, still canceling out factors from the top and the bottom. Your first step with dividing, remember, when you're dividing fractions, is to rewrite it as multiplying by the opposite. So for letter A, let's just go ahead and do that. We'll say 1 minus x squared over 3x plus 4 times 9x squared plus 24x plus 16 over x squared plus x minus 2. And now we can take it and factor everything. So, 1 plus x, 1 minus x. On the bottom, 3x plus 4. On the top of the next side here, right, that's a perfect square trinomial. So we should have a 3x plus 4 times a 3x plus 4. And then on the bottom, we should have an x plus 2 and an x minus 1. Remember, I, I'm, I'm done teaching you how to factor. We've gone over and over and over it. If you need help, you need to reach out to me, and I will help you individually. But I'm not going to teach you how to factor in every lesson over and over again. So let's just go ahead now and cancel these out. 3x plus 4, 3x plus 4. If I have a 1, I'm sorry, an x minus 1 on the bottom and a 1 minus x on the top, remember, we can cancel it that way and say this is negative 1. Make that positive 1 instead of factoring out the negative. And now when we look at it, we have an, a negative 1. I'm going to just flip this one around and say times the quantity of x plus 1 times the quantity of 3x plus 4 over an x plus 2. And times, yeah, we cancel this one out. So that is our answer. And then I believe this is the last one. Remember, when you have a fraction and a fraction, we call these complex fractions. For this one, it's like we have a fraction in the numerator, and then you could have a fraction in the denominator if you wanted to. But this is our main division bar. So let's just take it and rewrite it as y squared minus 5y plus 6 over a y plus 2. And I'm going to just rewrite it as division. Okay, just in its other form. So divided by y squared minus 4. And you can say that's over 1 if you want. Now let's do like we did in the last one where we took it and we, you know, changed it to multiplication and then we flip-flopped our expressions. And let's factor while we're doing it. So this first one should be a y minus 3 times a y minus 2 over a y plus 2. And then we're going to multiply by a 1 over, and this is a difference of squares, difference of squares. We have y plus 2 and y minus 2. And let's just see, what can we cancel out? I see here y minus 2 and y minus 2. And that might be it. So we have a y minus 3 over a y plus 2 quantity squared. That's all we got. So if you have questions, you need to make sure that you are reaching out 